Yo, what's up, what's up? This is your boy Gary Wenaina and uh, in Kenya Marikani. Thank you so much for your support. Remember to subscribe, like and share. Today we have a lady here who will be speaking to us. She's just joined um, America and uh, make sure you will subscribe and like <laughs> so that uh, we can be educated on how uh, or uh, if you're a visitor in America, what to do, or what are some of the questions they ask in the embassy. So remember to share, like, subscribe. God bless you. Faith, Nyabra Warroe. I'm from Kenya. I just came a week ago. I landed in Seattle on 21st of July 2021 from Nairobi. Uh, many people are asking me, are the, is the embassy open? But I had a visa before Corona, and therefore I decided to come and visit. Yeah. It's been uh, very trying two years since Corona came. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you fear, if I travel, there's so much Corona in the U.S. Back home, there's Corona. It's all over. So I just felt I needed a breather, mm -hmm. and I came to Seattle just to, to take a break. You know, and to have an experience. You know, life is so short. And Corona has taught us that we should ex enjoy every single day that God has given us. Um, yes, I love, I love what you guys are doing, you know, pulling together as a community and spending time away from work so that you can enjoy time together and celebrate together as a community. That is very, very important. Um, the second thing I would like to say from this trip is that sometimes we just hear in Kenya that people who are in America, Kenyans who are in America for that matter, are always working 24-7. Mm -hmm. So for me, this is uh, a revelation that that's not exactly true, uh, that you guys are taking time out, you know, just to bond and to relax and to get to know each other. Yeah. I'm enjoying myself. I've met so many people in this trip that I didn't know. I only knew Milka. But from the for the last one week, I have met so many people because Pastor Elias invited me to come for the celebration of the, the church. You know, the church was celebrating yeah. two, two years since its inception. Mm. And it was an amazing time again. You know, on Sunday, we had such an amazing time, bonding, eating, praying, and worshiping. And I loved it. And I'm loving the friendliness of the people of Seattle. Again, we hear a lot of stories um, about uh, people out there in the in the US. They're not so friendly to one another. But my one week is telling me a different story altogether. And I would like to say that a lot of the things that we experience come from our own internal um you know the way we are internally so sometimes we become hostile to the people who are coming or we become hostile to the people who are hosting us and i would just like to say i think it's about relationships yeah, yeah. yeah it's about having beautiful relationships and uh, when you have good relationships, then you're able to interact with other people. I like saying this. I'm a coach. And I say that the first critical relationship you can have is with your own self. You know, because when you have a relationship with yourself, then you learn to love yourself, to accept yourself, your strengths and weaknesses. And when you do that, you are able to withstand anything that is thrown at you by anybody else. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what I'd like to say and I hope that I will enjoy the time that I will spend here. I'm looking forward to the rest of the trip. Uh, I understand we're going to another mountain. Is it another peak or another mountain? And I look forward to to even eating very nice food like we had on Sunday. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. I know we've enjoyed some nice mandazi. Um, my friend has just given me a, a bottle of water and I know there's good stuff ahead of us. Did I forget something? The dancing. <laughs> oh, I just, I just love that. You know, just having fun and remembering to, to, to raise our Kenyan flag high because when we were celebrating and dancing down there, um, we honored our country. And I think that's very important in understanding your identity and respecting it in such a way that you will always remember where you 
came from. Is it Bob Marley who who sang or who who who, who sang going back to my roots? Was it the that, that's Lucky Dube? Lucky Dube, yes. Yeah. yeah, it's important to have to know your roots and to respect them. Yeah. And to just wherever wherever you are, just respect that. So I love that. So so uh, if I ask uh, if because my channel is all about uh, also encouraging Kenyans who mm -hmm. are in Kenya mm -hmm. and they uh, about maybe to go for a visa process. Mm -hmm. What are some of the questions that mm -hmm. you think they should prepare very well? Uh, for me, I would say this. Number one, self-confidence. Mm -hmm. Self-confidence. You know, when you're a confident person, you understand yourself fully well. You prepare yourself. You organize yourself. So you don't just walk and assume that because you have an invitation from a relative in America, when you walk to the embassy, that that uh, invitation is sufficient. It is not. There's the invitation, but there's you as a total package. How shall you present yourself? Mm -hmm. So that personal confidence is important. And also calling yourself to a meeting. Mm -hmm. You know, a meeting with your own self and ask yourself, what are they likely to ask me? You know, I am going to visit my friend. What's your name? Gary. Gary. Yeah. G Jerry or Gary? Gary. Gary. Yeah. So Jerry, Gary has invited me. Mm -hmm to go for a graduation or for a wedding, what are the questions that I'm likely to be asked at the embassy? So you will ask those questions based on what the US embassy is looking for. Mm. So understand, number one, if you're looking for a visitor's visa, that's a non-immigrant visa. It means that you're going to visit and come back. So they're likely to ask you questions that will verify to them, that is the embassy, that you are going to come back home. You have things that are holding you back home that you'll not want to part with. And that's why people talk about having a wife or a husband, children, property and all that. I did not have a husband and I declared I was divorced when I went for, for my interview and I still got the visa. Mm. Why? Because I had put my, my I had called myself to a meeting, mm. prayed about it but also rehearsed. Coaching is very important. People take it for granted but there are so many people even in Kenya who are willing to coach people so that when you go for the interview you can in you, you can think ahead the questions that you're likely to be asked. So that is important. So do you think it's necessary to use agent, agents to help you with the, with the process? Um, I think it is important to, to use an agent. And if you're not going to use an agent, then use a friend that, you can, that can mentor you. If you don't use an agent or a friend, then be a person who's willing to prepare yourself on your own. Research, research, research and then rehearse and prepare. Be the consular. You know, just Im imagine, you know, like a mock interview. Do even a mock interview on yourself, or, or alone, you know, in front of a mirror and ask yourself, is this reason good enough? Mm. You know, is this reason good enough? When I was coming, I uh, was invited for a wed wedding, a friend's wedding, and I didn't think that was a good reason for me to to come to America mm -hmm. at, at this point, you know, during this corona season. And therefore, I decided, no, that was not good enough. And I ended up having an invitation. And when I, at, at the port of entry, I can tell you, I was asked questions like I, I was, you know, being issued with a new visa. Fortunately, I had asked myself a number of questions. And therefore, when they were posed to me, I was able to answer them. You know, so preparing and not taking anything for granted. I think that is important. So, so what you're telling me is uh, at the port of entry mm -hmm. is as equally as inquisitive as at the embassy. It is. So you should both be prepared both places. Exactly. Yeah. Once you have the visa, don't assume that you have a ticket to enter the U.S. Mm. or any other country. Once you have a visa, you have crossed the first step. The second step is the port of entry. So just don't be careless, even at that point. Yeah, some people might uh, think since you had come to the US, mm -hmm. then the second time is gonna be so easy. Yes. Is that so? That's an assumption. That's an assumption. That's an assumption because the first time I wasn't asked questions. The second time I was asked many questions, you know? 
I was asked questions, mm. several questions. You know, at some point I'm, I was like, oh, okay, am I really going to pass? You see, so you should always be prepared. And at the beginning of this conversation, I said assumptions, we should put them aside. Yeah. Don't assume. Take it seriously. If you really want to come, nobody is forcing you to leave your country to come visit. Mm. So if you choose to come, then... It's, a, it's like you're investing in yourself. Yeah. Taking a trip is an investment, you know? Mm. So just take time and prepare yourself and expect the unexpected. At the end of the day, if somebody chooses to say no, you will not enter this country. You still have your home to go back to. Yeah, so do they book? And that, that mm. ties in with the self-confidence I talked about at the beginning. That when you are confident, then you're at a good place um, to, to, to know that you'd love to cross the border, but should it not work out, then you are comfortable going back home. I know that's, that's hard, but it is important because that confidence at the beginning is the one that will also carry you through the port of entry. So guys should not post that. I'm, I've gotten the visa. I'm going to the U.S. because you're no, not no, yet no. there. No, 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 no. You can get to the U.S., but not enter. Yeah. You can you can get to the airport mm. of the uh, of the US. So mm. you'll be in the US but you won't have entered the country. Yeah. So a visa is a good thing, but beyond the visa, the port of entry is still a good thing. And remember you guys know and you can tell us this one I'm not an authority, but you guys know that even being here, entering here, if you are careless you can still be deported. Isn't it? Yeah. So at all times just be comfortable with yourself and do the right thing that's what i would say yeah uh what, what how easy is it to get a host um hmm. it's not easy it's not easy to get a host mm. and i think i'd say this it's also not easy to get a host in nairobi coming from up country yeah. there are people who struggle they want to go to nairobi even for a job interview and it's very difficult to get somebody to accommodate you sometimes people accommodate you and they they are not able to to make your life as comfortable as you'd want i i learned the last time i came here i think one of my greatest take home was this that when somebody opens their doors of their home to you it is a privilege because that person is opening their life to you, the outsider. And uh, we make the mistake of entering somebody's home and assuming they're supposed to take care of us. And so we see small things that are not pleasing to us and we go talking about it out there. We forget that for that person to open their home to you, it is an honor and a privilege. Mm. So I think that's a, a, an important message I would like to, to send. When somebody opens their doors, know it is a privilege. Respect their privacy. Uh, keep the issues you see in the home confidential. You know? Just zip it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when you're, when you're treated in a way that may not be pleasing to you, remember, this is not your home. Yeah. This is not your lifestyle. So the way you do things at home, in your own house, it's not the same way your host may do things. So it becomes challenging because I like making my, my vegetables in a certain way. So I expect the host to make the vegetables in the same way or tea. Um, let me use an example of tea. Mm. I like Kenyan tea. Boil tea leaves and put milk in a sufuria and boil it Kenyan tea. And Gary might be comfortable with the English type of tea, where you boil water, then you pour it, tea, put a tea bag and put milk. So when they make that tea, when, Ger when I'm hosted by Gary, I shouldn't go saying how he doesn't know how to make tea. Because that's his preference. For me, if that's how he makes tea and I'm, a, I'm, I'm hosted by Gary, I will take that tea. Mm. Yeah, I will take that tea and be grateful. So I think I would say getting a host is not easy. Uh, and what I have learned from my literal experience here is that people really work hard in this country. So for somebody to, to come and expect that somebody will go work so hard 
and then come home and start chaparring stories with you or entertaining you, that's expecting too much, that's demanding too much, or do things for you. So I think what I'd also like to probably say with people back home is that when you come and you are hosted by somebody, be grateful, be gracious, and be supportive as much as you you can. Sometimes learn to, to pick cues from the other person. Somebody comes from work and they're tired, they don't want to talk, stop stories. You know, just respect their space so that they can relax. You know, um, I'm staying with Milka. I can tell you she's sitting over there. When she comes from work, she wants to go to bed. Mm. And I can see she's struggling to entertain me. So I tell her, no, 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 you sleep, we'll talk tomorrow. But just because I'm aware. If I was not aware, what would happen? I would feel like she's ignoring me. She doesn't want to be kind to me. She's supposed to be entertaining me. So I'll say things like, sorry to switch to mother tongue. Oh, let me just put it this way. She comes from work and she doesn't even have time for me. Mm. But that's not the reality. The reality is for her, she comes home tired and therefore she's not in a position to entertain me. So it's good to put... Um, to be empathetic, both parties, the host and the person being hosted. So the host, as tired as they are, they also have to try and create space so that they can give this person a hand so that they can learn their, their ropes around here. Because I think the, the other big thing I would say is that when somebody comes to visit, when you invite somebody, please understand what are their plan. Why are they coming? How long? Are they going to be with you? And don't know, don't keep it in your head. Don't assume, discuss it with the person, even before they leave home. How long are they coming? What is their objective? How long do they want to stay? And how long can you accommodate them? And what can you do to help them become self-sufficient? Because I think that's a conversation that people tend not to have. And then um, people start and misunderstanding each other because clear communication was not uh, applied from the word go. So I think that's what I would like to say, Gary, and I hope I have answered your question. Yeah, last but not least, uh, tell us what are some of the culture shock that really surprised you when you oh, came to America? When, when I came to America. Oh my goodness, this time, no. Because, you know, I had come earlier. But I think the first time when I came, I came over winter. So for me, the the winter, and I landed in Minnesota. That was, is that a culture shock? <laughs> or oh, a weather shock? Mm -hmm. I think that was a nightmare for me. Uh, being around here and experiencing that, um, that, that weather. The second thing was that I speak English. And I would say I speak good English. Mm -hmm. And fortunately, it was very challenging communicating with the Americans, you know, because we tend to to speak with different, is it, intonation? Intonation, the accent. Mm. Um, then also is interfered with the British. Here yeah, they speak. Yeah, the, yeah, like I'll talk about chips. Yeah. And uh, we wouldn't, uh, you know, it's like chips. No, we don't, we don't sell chips here. You know, by the time I understood that chips means crisps. In Kenya, we call yeah. them crisps. We call chips chips. Uh, the potatoes, the fries. Yeah. Fries, we call them chips back home. Here, you call them fries. So now me was talking of chips. And then I'm told chips and I'm given, uh, I'm given crisps. So that, that was also the language was also uh, a barrier. And most of the times, many times, I never used to hear uh, what people are saying. I also ended up in different states and I Let's go about the culture shock. One more guy, sorry, no. Oh, sorry. You're live. Okay. Oh, we start again, the culture shock. So I talked about the winter. It was, I had never, I had never ever experienced that kind of cold. And I thoroughly prepared myself psychologically to, to experience winter, but I, I don't think you can ever prepare yourself for winter. You really have to experience it to know what it is and uh, how, how, 
how stressful it is and I appreciate Nairobi when I got back home I just I just wore a t-shirt and jeans and just jumped into the streets and walked to enjoy the sun you know the sunlight uh, and then the second thing I said the language barrier the accent and then the fact that we speak British English in Kenya so things like uh, chips in America means fries and chips I mean Amer- in America if you talk about chips you're talking about crisps so that that was quite challenging things like minced meat and ground beef oh that was another one so I think that and then there was the issue of um, okay race I think I had experienced um, yeah I, I think there's a time I, I went to a European country and I was so shocked that there were so many white people You see, in Nairobi, you're used to seeing a few people. Yeah. So I had never understood that there are so many white people. But now I know that the black people are the minority in the world. But that, before I didn't know. So there, th- those are some of the things. And then I don't know whether you can call the beautiful in- infrastructure in this country a culture shock. Yeah. I don't know. But I think it's something that's really amazing. Even just now. When we arrived here, I had some ladies say, I wish we can do this to Mount Kenya, yeah. you know, the mountain. In Kenya, I wish we can, I, I wish the government can do a road like this one. Paved, paved you know, a paved road. You paved see, road to imagine to the hills, to the mountain, on top of the mountain. To, to, on top of the mountain. Yeah. So I think that, that was something, that, that's something else that I would say. And also the efficiency, you know, the system works beautifully. And that's an amazing thing. So I think um, the efficiency in America in terms of service delivery and all that, it's amazing. Yeah. And also, poli- the, the, let me say, is it etiquette? Would mm-hmm. I call it etiquette? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, the, I think this was in Minnesota when I bought a bus. And when, we were, uh, when it stopped, I stood up to to move out and my host told me no here you don't jump the queue people get out of the bus using the rows the ones who are there uh, the, near the door they come out fast mm. and i was like oh okay because in nairobi <laughs> so i think that kind of etiquette also was something that i think that in, in i think i would say there are beautiful things here and there are also those things that are beautiful back home So for me I, I think uh, I'd say I'd, this is not about culture shock but I think uh, for me I found myself loving this country and also loving my country. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I don't know whether there are Kenyans who would say 100% they love America and don't love back home but I think it's you you are kind of torn. There yeah. are things about, you appreciate about yeah home. you appreciate about your home i know you love kenyan tea uh, kenyan spices stuff like that and i can see you have a kenyan t-shirt so i think that's what i can say yeah thank mm. you so much for coming to kenya marekani yes unless you wanted to say a last remark uh, my last remark is to to just be encourage all of us because we're living in a very challenging uh, season to just encourage each one of us to continue trusting in God. I think we are here courtesy of our faith in God. So may we depend on him, continue trusting in him. And yes. Okay. Thank you, Gary. Bless you. Same uh, subscribe to Kenya Marekani. Asante sana. I will do that. Yeah. Bye-bye.